I want to talk about a couple of the patterns that I think, the strategies that I think are really most important in really tapping the, the innovative potential of these environments. And the first one is something we, we've, we've seen in the case of snow, which is what I call the slow hunch. Eureka moments are overrated. We like to tell stories of innovation using the Eureka moments story where the apple falls from the tree and you've got a theory of gravity. There's something nice about telling the story that way. But when you go back and look at the history of innovation, you almost always find that great ideas have a long incubation period. They start with this hunch, this feeling that there's a problem that you could solve in a new way, but you can't quite explain why. And they sometimes stay in that state for years, even in some cases as long as a decade. Um, and so part of the trick of an organization or an individual is to figure out a way to keep those hunches alive. Because it's so easy to forget to store them somewhere, to kind of upload them somewhere so that you can revisit them or that they can kind of commingle with other hunches in other people's minds. Because that they are the true kind of seeds of, of truly breakthrough ideas. Great example uh, of a hunch that changed the world, uh, of a slow hunch that changed the world, is, is kind of embedded in this image here. Um, this room can figure out what this is. Uh, it says, th the handwriting says, this machine is a server. Do not power it down. And the giveaway there is that it says CERN in the upper left-hand corner. This little sticker was on the original World Wide Web server back when the World Wide Web was running on one machine, which I like. You could literally trip over the power cord and the entire web would go offline. Um, and, and Tim Berners-Lee, in coming up with the web, he, he worked on this project for you know, kind of six or seven years as a side project at CERN. You know, he got there as a young programmer, was kind of overwhelmed by all the information that was flowing through the place, all the amazing projects, and he started tinkering with this thing on the side. Um, didn't tell his superiors about it for quite a long time, and it wasn't until you know six or seven years later, after he'd gone through several iterations of it, that he finally you know had that awkward conversation with his boss, where he had to go in and say, "I may have invented a global communications medium in my spare time. Uh, can this be my day job, please?" Um, and it was because and it's crucial to the story that 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 Berners Lee had his in his own personal temperament and in his work environment that he was able to keep that hunch alive for, for that long a period of time. Most of us get distracted, and we don't kind of follow those hunches, or we don't keep them going over five or six years. But he was able to do that, and, and the world changed because of, it, because of this. But it's also crucial that he wasn't building it all from scratch, right? Um, he had people like Vince Cerf, who had built this underlying platform of the internet that he could build a kind of a layer on top of, and he was borrowing and kind of remixing other technologies like SGML, modifying it and turning it into HTML. So that hunch, as important as it was, was also kind of a network of other ideas and other platforms and other technologies. The idea wasn't a single thing. It was a network of ideas. So then the question becomes, if, if ideas are made out of kind of multiple hunches and, and existing technologies, what are the environments then that allow those hunches and, and ideas to kind of coalesce into something larger than themselves. And I call those environments liquid networks. 